Welcome to the Let's Talk Data podcast series presented by SAP, where we explore game-changing technology and strategies with leading experts with the goal of maximizing the value of data across your organization. If you haven't done so already, please follow or subscribe to our podcast on your favorite channel to stay tuned in. Marcus Kupa is VP, Chief Product Owner, SAP Master Data Governance. And he will be joined by Kevin Poskett, who is Senior Director, Cross Product Management, SAP HANA Database and Analytics. They are going to discuss how to leverage master data management and business data fabric to broaden data access across the enterprise. Marcus, over to you. Thank you, Chris, for the introduction. This is uh, Marcus Kuppel speaking. I'm the chief product owner for SAP Master Data Governance, and I'm based out of SAP's headquarters in Waldorf in Germany. Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin Poskett. I'm part of the cross product management team here at SAP for our data and analytics solutions. Uh, and I'm located in Vancouver, BC in Canada. So what we really want to talk about is, you know, from a data governance perspective, what, what is it that makes data governance so challenging? And, and really, when we look at this, there's really two diametrically opposing needs that we see um, when we talk to various customers of ours. And, and the first is when we look at what the business is, is requiring, um, it's all about having real time access to data, you know, across multiple different interfaces uh, and having it be self service as much as possible. So you have your users wanting to get access to data, you know, where they typically go on their applications or on, on their, you know, different technology stacks, and they want everything to be up to date. And they need to know that they can be able to trust it. The challenge with doing this is from a technology perspective, this is very complex. Um, there are infinitely more types of applications out there than existed previously. There's also different ways of moving and storing data that haven't historically existed. And so we have tried a number of different things over the years. Uh, we have tried completely centralizing not only the governance uh, of all of this data, but trying to create single monolithic applications that do everything wall to wall. And we've also tried numerous ways of completely centralizing data in one place, whether it is the, you know, enterprise data warehouses of the 90s and 2000s moving into, you know, centralized Hadoop moving into data lakes that now have issues around, you know, are they becoming data swamps, there's always been this desire to try and centrally uh, store and maintain data. And, and then have a governance layer on top. And the challenge with that is by the time you are able to centralize all this data, it's then out of date. And so what we're really looking and, and need to be able to do is to balance the needs of the business, uh, which is really having a lot of loosely coupled decentralized systems um, that are able to share data in real time or near real time but to simply centralize the governance of this data you know, across this very complex landscape. And that's what we're here uh, to talk to you about today. For those of you who are not familiar uh, with SAP, or maybe you, you only know of SAP as you know, a, a, a large ERP company you know, based out of Germany, I wanna give you this picture uh, to show you sort of how SAP has evolved uh, over the years. And, and so certainly at the core of our business, <clears throat> we still have the history in enter enterprise resource planning. Um, we have a number of cloud options for ERP, and then we add a layer of industry specific or, or industry focused content uh, to make our ERP very much tailored to the needs of our customers. But surrounding that, we also have plug-in cloud-based applications for human capital management, for what we call spend management and business network, uh, and of course, customer relationship management. And then all of this sits on top of a set of technology that we, for, we refer to as the SAP business technology platform. So in terms of you know, where our data management solutions sit, they're part of this business technology platform. But the really important thing to know here is if you look at all of the different capabilities in the business technology platform, they are all solely dependent on the quality of data that's flowing into or across this platform. And so when, when I think about governance and when we talk about governance, uh, my focus is really on the data and analytics side, but there's you know a, a saying or a traditional saying in English, it's garbage in, garbage out. So if you at the point of data creation, 
If your users are, are creating faulty data or bad data, then you end up in a situation where all of the things you're trying to do with that data, whether it's on business technology platform or, or a, another set of services, you're going to have all of these issues because you cannot trust that data um, and you're going to have to go through the arduous process of trying to correct it after the fact. So I'm going to pass things over to Marcus now um, because I think Marcus and, and the product that he represents is, is very critical in terms of a first step of data governance, which is how do I ensure that the data in my applications and across my applications are, are clean uh, and also synchronized? So Marcus, if I could pass it over to you. Sure, thanks, Kevin. Uh, so when you think about operational excellence, and for example, your supply chain efficiency or your sales effectiveness, uh, this excellence is only possible based on consistent, high quality and trusted master data. And only clean master data allows businesses then to run with the expected performance and expected results. And then based on that master data, the business applications can collect and deliver complete and accurate transactional data to form a complete uh, 360 degree view of the business. And then harmonized master data across all business applications really allows you to drive a process execution based on a full picture of the facts across these various applications. For example, allowing for cross-selling to the same customer, but also from parts of the company that are served by separate sales applications. Or driving a better customer experience backed by consistent and accurate customer data across all touch points of your customer interaction channels. Or for example, fully understanding master data along your supply chain allows for more robust communication with your suppliers, faster throughput for your customers, and better supply chain flexibility in case of any crisis or any fundamental change. One approach is to consolidate master data that before only existed in data silos. The master data is standardized, duplicates are detected, best records are constructed from match groups of duplicates, and key mapping is created towards all the duplicate representations of the same object across those silos. Another approach a centralized creation and maintenance of master data. And this helps to apply governance and data quality with a first time right approach. So duplicates are always avoided and validations ensure perfect quality before actually master data is used in the business. And then automation allows for increased efficiency of master data creation, for example, through workflows or auto population of attribute values. And then in addition, organizations may run continuous quality management and remediation. That is a circle in the middle of the slide which lets you define and validate and monitor quality based on business rules. And then based on recurring quality evaluation results, data problems can be fixed in mass processes that correct many master data issues at once. SAP Master Data Governance, or MDG, is SAP's solution for master data management. It is built to help companies improve the quality of master data and to increase the level of trust in master data. SAP MDG is one application for all master data. It's not only for SAP master data. It does come with a lot of out-of-the-box domain-specific capabilities across several standard data models, uh, data models, if you will, that are, of course, based on SAP's data models and business logic. But MDG is also a platform that is used by many of our customers to build master data governance processes on extended data models and completely custom-defined master data domains. And one of the key strengths of MDG is that all the processes for central governance, for consultation, for data quality monitoring and remediation, they are all integrated on one architecture and can be, can be combined as required to cover all those use cases and all the implementation styles for a complete enterprise MDM program. Now I talked a lot about the effort that companies put into achieving that quality and trust in master data for operational use cases. But Kevin, how can companies preserve all the quality and all that hard work that they have put into the data when it comes to analytical use cases? It's a perfect question. Thank you, Marcus. So, you know, once you have gone through the effort and you have a good governance process in place to ensure that across your SAP and your non-SAP landscape of applications, that you're creating this harmonized data, you know, that you can trust. The next question is, how do you actually manage that data and how do you make it available? Uh, so when we think about this, uh, SAP Datasphere, which is our uh, data and analytics uh, business data fabric that we really use for this, we think about the overall data strategy. And, and what you'll see here is, you know, the idea is to democratize access to business data while still following this, this rigorous pattern of 
how do we ensure that this data is you know secure that the people who are authorized or should be authorized to have access to this data have access and only those people um, how do we ensure that we're managing you know privacy concerns uh, all of those sorts of, of details so the first step that we really look at is this idea of data cataloging so you you first have to get access to this data um, and once you have the ability to access this data you know how does an end user know what's out there so this is where we really have the the data catalog capabilities where you can search you know free form uh, enter in a term that you're looking for, and based on the existing metadata uh, that we can scrape from all of the connected data sources, we can show you here, here are the things that are available for, for you to look at. Uh, on top of that, we also have data profiling capabilities. So Marcus talked about business rules. Well, we also can have similar business rules that we apply and we can show on each of these data sets that you're thinking of using, you know, what is the quality score based on the, those sets of, of business rules. Um, we also have the ability for users to generate their own content and comments uh, about you know, what this data set is good for or what it's not good for. We have a glossary that keeps track of terms and KPIs that may exist in the data set. So the idea here is making it very easy for users to discover data across any connected data asset and, and being able to quickly get a sense of whether they can, can use that data or not. Um, so the next step, once you've discovered and understood that this is the data set I want to work with, there's multiple different ways that we can integrate and work with that data. And so one of the, th the great problems that I think we have had over the past decade, if not longer, is constantly copying and moving data every time we want to do something new with it. And so when we talk about a business data fabric, what we're really talking about is having a set of capabilities that, yes, can include moving and copying and replicating data, but as much as possible, we want to focus on leaving the data where it is, close, if not directly in the source system, where we federate that data and can work with the source system to preserve things like business semantics. So that's why you, know, you may hear <clears throat> the term data fabric thrown around a lot. The reason we talk about a business data fabric is data sphere in particular, has a lot of capabilities uh, uh, with SAP's ERP, where we can actually remotely federate and send queries directly to the source system, and we can work with all of the business logic that exists in the application. So a lot of times the pattern that we see, uh, people come and they ask us to replicate data from SAP, and they land it in some kind of object store or data lake. But when they do that, they're losing all of the relationships between the tables that the data reside in. So that's actually what we preserve. So you can go into the application layer and ask business type questions. How many purchase orders are open? How many invoices have I paid in the past three days? These questions, because we preserve the business logic and can use the source system, they're very easy to answer quickly. And then beyond that, we also have you know, our own machine learning capabilities. We have our own master data models, and we have prefabricated business content around specific business areas. So as an SAP Datasphere customer, you don't just get a set of technology, you get access to uh, free content that has everything you need to either remotely uh, connect to or to copy data from your SAP system, pre-built data models, pre-built analytics reports and planning models uh, around specific things like you know, finance, HR, et cetera. So the whole idea here is to make it as simple as possible for users to find the data that they want to work with, uh, to be able to bring that data in or to connect to it and work with it in a federated manner um, and, and really get the value in that data, which is, is generally found you know, in the reports or in the planning models where you're actively looking at data historically and saying, what does this mean for my business and how do I improve how my business runs? From a governance perspective, the other piece that we have in place is the concept of spaces. So even though this is all a single system, um, these spaces allow us to make sure that the people who should have access to the data are the right people. Um, and it prevents anyone who does not have authorization in that space uh, from, from having access to the data. So just as a, as a summary, Datasphere itself is a, an entire platform around managing business data. Um, it has the ability to do data discovery and cataloging, orchestration, 
data ingest and self-service data access, all with a layer of governance on top. We work very well with SAP and non-SAP data, and we feed directly into different data consumers. So whether that's planning and analytics solutions, intelligent data applications, or data science applications. And so really what I'm hoping you can take away is the way that having a good master data management strategy and having a good business data fabric, um, how those are really intertwined and important. So the first is all about how do I increase trust and the quality of my business critical master data? How do I know that the business processes that are running in my organization are running on the same set of trusted data? And that means that we are going to achieve operational excellence. But that data has had a lot of effort put in to make sure that you can trust it. And this is where sharing this data broadly across your organization in a controlled and governed manner so that that data remains high in quality is where a business data fabric comes in. So these two things are really split sides of the same coin. And it's all about how do I have good data widely available that's helping my business run more effectively. So thanks for your time, Marcus and myself. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you. And thank you again to everyone for listening to our SAP Let's Talk Data podcast, discussing data governance with master data management and a business data fabric. I encourage everyone listening to take a look at the additional resources that are available within the show notes or the description. And then please leave your own comments, share, and subscribe to the series to stay tuned for new episodes and get caught up on the ones you may have missed. Thanks again and be well. We hope you enjoyed the podcast. Check out the show notes for additional links to information and please subscribe or follow to join us on the next episode of Let's Talk Data presented by SAP.